Younger May spent years trying to put herself in a position where she could just live life as a rapper, but it didn't go as planned. Throughout her journey, she faced some real serious life problems. Younger May been around for a minute. I'm talking about she been bitch since about 2016, but been rapping since about 2011. Thing is, though, her career ain't start popping until about 2014. And the way she came to be was somebody not liking her music. 2014, she had dropped the freestyle of the Chirac by Nicki and her. And so I got online basically not messing with it. They felt like she was promoting the wrong thing to where she was from. Cause the song wasn't just called Chirac Remix, it was called Brooklyn Chirac. And so the man who made the post was just saying she promoting all this negativity and all this bad energy to Brooklyn and she was just gonna make the city worse. But his Facebook post did the complete opposite of what he thought it was gonna do. This was the first moment her career started to get some eyes on it. The post went viral, meaning this song went viral. And it basically started a career for real, for real. Cause after this, she was just on a run. 2015 dropped more big songs, but 2016 will be the year everything changed for Young M.A. And before I tell y'all about that, word from today's sponsor, Scentbird. Scentbird is a subscription that lets you get all type of designer colognes to try every month for just $17. So really think about it. You getting any kind of cologne you could ever think of for the low. Not only that, but the subscription real flexible. You can cancel whenever you want. But what they sent me today was three different fragrances. I got Apex Roja, Centier, and some Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. And if you look, when they send it to you, they send it to you in these little pouches that's real easy to carry around. But that ain't all. If you look at the side, you can move the bottle around and unlock it so it won't accidentally spray. But it's probably another question on your mind. Where do it even come from? Well, if you open up the container, you can see the actual bottle itself and how much it comes with. But me personally, out of all three, the one I like the best gotta be the Dolce and Gabbana. This smell like something you could wear every day. It kinda got this sweet rosewood type smell to it. Now, the Apex Rosa kinda reminds me of an incense. Basically, a good smelling incense in spray form. And if you look on the ingredients, it got mandarin pineapple leather and even sandalwood so you can kind of picture how it would smell and lastly the scent here it's this real woody like smell and it got a mix of oranges with it and look like i said before the dolce and gabbana is my personal favorite but they all smell good y'all could really do something with each of these clones but with these fragrances, you get a 30 day supply before you would even have to commit to buying a full 200 to 300 dollar box make sure you use my code prince with two e's linked at the top of the description and the pin comment and with my code it's barely even seven dollars for your first month and this is available in both usa and canada but this will be the year that she became a face the whole world knew for real she came out dropped ooh, a song anybody will remember i'm talking about the song peak that number 19 and it was all over the internet the success was just coming in beyonce co-signer every rapper you can think of remixing the song she was even performing at the 2016 bt award but that came with its own problems her freestyle ended up getting cut short and she was not liking that oh they cut mad on my cypher yo, son yo, 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 yo you know i said way more than that they split my shit up and put that to some smaller Time. But I'm telling you, over these next few months, she was just going crazy. She got brought on stage by Nicki Minaj, was linking up with Cardi B. And it's funny saying that now, because Nicki and Cardi B for now. But all the success at the time wasn't all good. Yes, she might have been doing this music, but why do you think she was doing this music? Her brother ended up passing away to gain violence, and she just wanted to help maintain his memory through her music. It's through him and his life and keeping his name alive that I continue to do what I do. That wasn't all though. After she started blowing up and really getting into the industry, she seen how it really was. Because even though she presented herself like a nigga speaking on these topics that normally men would talk about, these labels kind of looked past all that. And they was trying to force her to wear dresses and all, all this weird timing just for some marketing. XXL wrote this. It wasn't an easy road, especially with gender coming to play. Being told by her early manager that she'd be forced to wear dresses for markability. M.A. was discouraged for a while, compounded by other issues in the life. She said, I think it was a point where I was just lost personally and mentally. I had just lost my brother and I was holding on the secret of being gay for my family for a long time. It was just a lot of overwhelming stuff that was coming about. Once I got to that point and was comfortable with myself and who I was and didn't care about what people thought of me, that's when I felt like it was the perfect time to express my music. So really think about it. 2016 is where a lot about her as a person changed. But also, just a few months after she blew, she getting booked for all these shows. And I mean, that's how it always go. But at one show, something kind of went wrong. A club promoter from one of her 2016 shows came out saying she scanned them out 30,000. And this one moment right here basically started a war. The promoter said she allegedly pulled up to the show, seen it wasn't enough people for her liking, so she got up and left. And after everything went down, he got online speaking his mind. The back angle, everything was paid. We, young and me came to the club. Uh, she said the club wasn't packed enough. The venue wasn't packed enough. And we paid her the full amount, the full 
back and nothing was shut, cut shut on anyway. I told her to be on her way to the club. I got the text message to prove everything. She said she talked to someone else and they told her not to come. I don't know, but as far as our end goal, she was supposed to be there. The after party was supposed to be at V-Live. Um, Young and May had a nasty attitude the whole goddamn time. It took me three weeks to get the drop from Young and May. Young and May had an attitude problem. I called her about my back end because she didn't show. She ran to the goddamn airport with her manager, her management team. They stopped answering the phone. She did a whole nother concert the next day that she promoted that she wasn't supposed to do. And I want my mother money in me. You hear me? Me and my team, me and Team Dog Records, won our money this Wednesday. My, my hood pissed off in me. Look, you hear me? My hood pissed off in me. On the roof, me? Money, you hear me? You want, man, you know what? Y'all want this that hoe? Y'all want this that hoe? Man, young and made this coming soon, you hear me? Catch me while I need shit. Man, that hoe, you hear me? Hey, me, I woke up 33. I was thinking. I was calling. You thought I was broke, oh? Worry about that. You hear me? Let me tell you something. All y'all talking about, he don't look like he got no mother money. I don't stunt. I want my 33, you hear me? You see this 33? You see this mother 33? I want my f money. You hear me? I swear to God, academics, all that say, bro. On the real, dog, you hear me? Look, this for my city. I gotta live in this. You ain't even apologize to my people, you hear me? I want my f money. Apologize to my people. We ain't stopping. I stand behind New Orleans, you hear me? We ain't fing stopping, you hear me? Apologize to my fucking people. I want my fucking money. You hear me? Man, I swear to God, though. I want my fucking money. Bro. And y'all seen how that man was talking. He was really trying to smoke her about that money. But it was a problem. A problem with that whole video. See, younger May was smart. She knew what was coming. The night of the show, she was at the airport, right? She was waiting on the driver to come get her. And the driver that was supposed to come get her never came. So... She just sat at the airport for hours. The driver still ain't here. The driver, Ben's was supposed to be here. We've been ready. Where the f ready to go, that, but man. you know they gonna put it on Young and May as well, usual. I mean, it's a love that I gotta make these videos before I do these shows now. Cause he's dragging my name in the dirt over some f ain't because of me. Yo, bro, how long we been waiting in this lobby to Boy, go to this venue? 11 o'clock, these niggas, I couldn't even take a nap, man. Like, what the f I'm tired. I'm ready to go. Where's the car? Yo, listen, I just want to give a shout out to all my supporters. You do me, please don't believe everything you see in the media. Please. God knows. That's all. So from now on, I'm going to start making videos before every show on my snap so y'all can see what's up for real, for real. Don't bo It's almost 2.30. I'm still here waiting on the driver. The venue closed at 3. Tell you, I'm going to keep making videos so y'all no, it ain't me, yo. The driver finally here. As you can see, he just pulled up. They just pulled up. We've been waiting since 11. We just pulled up to the venue. It's like 3 o'clock now. Been waiting since 11 o'clock. Really listen to what she said. They got to the airport at 11 p.m. and didn't get to the club till 3 a.m. So she sat and waited four hours at the airport, pretty much because she wanted to. Younger May could have called an Uber, nigga, taxi, anything, but she didn't. And people realized that back then. One comment said, if you have a contract and an agreement, it is your obligation to fulfill it. If a car is supposed to pick you up and didn't take you to the venue at 11 p.m., why well, sit there like a dummy? And Snapchat posting too. 3 a.m. Not one call, not one time that we see her make a call to promoter or anyone at the venue to help her find out where her car service was. She ain't no celeb or star to act like she can't catch a ride or an Uber to the club. It's her job to be there. That's what she was paid for. And he do got a point. If you did get paid for this show and you knew you could have found a way to this club, why didn't you do it? But I think the problems go deeper than that, right? Like y'all done seen in many of these videos I posted before. Normally, whatever artists don't go to a show, they skip a show. You know what the promoter do? Call their lawyer right up. But with these niggas, instead of doing the most logical thing and getting a lawyer, they decided to make this trace and threaten to kill But if you want them and if they ever got their money back, I don't know. Maybe if they went to court, they could have got that money back, but I don't know. But 2016 still had something left for it though. December 
2016. This month was a wild one. She was doing the freestyle and said something real out of pocket. And if you somehow don't know who Tuka is, this a 15 year old boy who passed away in Chicago back in 2011. And rappers from all over Chicago still diss him to this day. So what would Younger May, a rapper from New York, be dissing Tuka for? We don't know, but what we do know is what came out. What this started was something wild. Something I'm not really finna go into detail about, but it kind of started a little mini war between New York and Chicago. All these Chicago rappers started coming at her. Well, take, you don't take know no take her for. Everybody want to take her for. Make sure no. Keep that two mouth. On my grandma, we putting up on. And we getting together, fool. Together, fool. I stay with killers, fool. I stay with killers, fool. I stay with killers, man. You know what I'm saying? We want to put them on my. Oh, my grandma, like I said, I have my cuz to beat her ass. We ain't popping the hoes, fool. We ain't doing nothing. But I got d cousins that's gonna whoop my fool. I'm a bully. I ain't finna bully no. Come on, man. Get the out of that bitch. Better go sit the down. She got to worry about bleeding every month. She turn out. You got me stuck. I will come to New York right now. We got sticks, we got real sticks, nigga. You think we, you think we worry about any We not ducking nothing. You from New York, nigga. Tell me how y'all ass ain't known for doing nothing. You come out, nigga. Y'all crime rate not happy. Come out. Somebody worry about you, old ass clown ass. Claim she don't know what she was saying. Gotta get on the internet and say sorry. Tell me out, nigga. And it'll be over. Hey, don't fuck. The music, baby boy, baby girl, but don't do n like that for real. Huh? Don't do that. Shit. You will not be able to perform in Chicago, like for real, man. Y'all, come on, man. Fool had to pull up fake dreads and think about it. Like, you grab your put and think of something, baby. Like, for real. Like, you tripping. Like, that shit ain't cool for real. Killed over that. Shit. Every day, yeah. she said this, and the internet was kind of looking at it real strange. And it got to a point where she had to respond. It wasn't no avoiding. It. I have no problem with Chicago. Never have, never did, never will. I have no reason to. Period. I have no reason to. I listen to a lot of artists out of Chicago. It's all love. Period. I'm in New York. It's all love. Period. I have no issues. But like I said, again, I send my apologies to Tuka. I never knew who Tuka was. I'm going to say it again. I don't know who Tuka is. Never knew who he was. Just following this out the other day. My apologies. My meaning on it was some loud smoke. I said it in the line. I smoke hookah like it's Tuka blowing jet clouds. And I only get high to bring the stress down. My reference was to weed. So for people to take it out of context, context, it's crazy. No bad intentions behind it. Understand that. But I send my apologies again to Tuka and his family. That's it. My apologies. Now this clip is from 2016. I don't know how much they was dissing or talking about him in the music back then, but... I guess it's kind of possible she could have thought it meant some gas by the way people talk about Tuka. But as all these Chicago rappers were just dissing her, King Yellow came out saying she had a ghost right I want to give a deep apology out to y'all NBA. I'm so sorry. Her management just got up with me. They told me she got a ghost rider. They did not know anything about Tuka. She did not know. I'm so deeply, I'm so hurt and I'm so sorry that I went that far. Like young and May, I'm sorry. It's hurting me because you, I just found out people write some music for you. You having a ghostwriter, it's, it's hurting me. Tell your ghostwriter, I'm gonna smack the down for saying that too long because he knew what he was saying. But shout out New York, I love Damn, right. Some days later, this random grown ass man named D Rod comes online saying he was her ghostwriter with no proof. Uh D. Wright, former member of Bad Boy Records, back once again. Look, I'm out here in Killer Cali right now, you know what I'm saying? Chilling, doing what I do. You know, I'm bi coastal and I'm all over the world and all over the globe and stuff like that. But look, some information been going on. It got out today, it's all over the internet. Young M.A. talking about how she don't have a ghostwriter. 
Now, this is the thing. I've been knowing Young M.A. for the past year and a half. She know I've been writing a whole bunch of her stuff. I've been ghostwriting. I've been behind the production also as well. So, look, this is what we're going to do here, right? Stop fronting Young M.A. I've been getting calls all day long talking about, go ahead and expose her. I'm like, nah, I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? I'm still working with her, but people just keep egging me on to do this. So look, your boy D-Ride been ghostwriting for the past 10 to 12 years when I was up under Bad Boy Records. You know what I'm talking about? For a whole bunch of artists that you guys probably already know. But this is what we're going to do here also, right? Young and May, you said if there's anybody out there that ghost wrote your stuff, you know, step up to the plate. D-Ride. Bad Boy Records, you know, I ain't signed none of them no more, but I appreciate Diddy for everything he did. Holla at your boy, man. 100. You know, I looked it up, but I couldn't really find no records of this man named D-Rod ever being a part of Bad Boy Records or even having anything to do with the music space. And really for the next few months, she was just dropping music, doing shows, getting money. But it was a problem. Over this time period, she didn't really have another big hit, but she was growing her own little fan base. And along with this fan base, she started a foundation. Remember what I said, her brother had passed away a minute ago. And that's something that's always gonna have an effect on her life. So she was just wanting to help other people out and started the Queens Foundation. This foundation helps those residing in her East New York neighborhood overcome with grief and trauma that comes with the loss of a loved one. Younger May said, I got my mother involved because she sadly lost her son, my brother, in 2009. And it's something for her to get into and give her a little relief and meet other mothers who've been in the same situation so they know they're not alone. Younger May said, no matter how much success you have in life, you'll still go through struggles and feel that pain. And that is facts. And around this time, she was open with her pain. She was doing interviews and just talking about some of the things that she went through and how bad her alcohol problems had got throughout the years. And on the topic of her alcohol problems, that would be something she would be facing later on in her career. But this time would be a change for her music. See, something I didn't speak on was her career. Really throughout time, she was evolving as an artist. And in 2020, she was heavily promoting how she was gonna change her music. But her music is a strange topic. She blew up back in 2016, right? But she didn't drop a debut album for years. All she did was drop singles on singles on singles. And it took her until 2019 to actually drop a debut album. And when people got to question her about her tape, she came to XXL saying this, I wasn't ready. Outside forces piled on. I didn't know how much negativity would actually come with the fame. The extra stuff you don't expect. You say one thing, it gets twisted up. Where you become the topic of discussion over something that's not even true. I didn't come into this trying to be a negative, controversial type person for like a whole year straight. I was just eating bad, drinking bad. I had gained up to 20 pounds. I remember I was like 167, 170. I couldn't believe it. She was barely in the industry and was going through all that. The pressure was probably too much. And she did eventually bounce back by the time the album did come around. She had lost all that weight and was trying to do better. And really, from that moment forward, she was just doing whatever. She had got arrested for regular job at one point, became director on P-Hub, and was even getting accused of being pregnant at one point. One tweet said, I don't know who started the rumor that Young M.A. pregnant, but they need to be in solitary confinement. Another said, this was Young M.A. coming to Twitter, finding out that she was pregnant. What the But what would really have the world paying attention to her again is in March of 2023. A video touched down on her online looking not okay. I'm talking about unhealthy. You see in the clip, her eyes was bright yellow. And this had people real worried about her. If you don't know why that's a problem, right? Yellow eyes normally mean somebody liver going through it. And it can also be a sign of somebody being addicted to alcohol. And what did she just tell the world about? Being addicted to alcohol when she was young. When the internet seen this clip, they was going crazy. Whatever Younger Man has going on right now is honestly none of our business. Now is not the time to speculate or speak negatively. Just wish her well and let her be. Another comment. The barber is wrong and unethical. Younger Man's whole body language look like she didn't want to be recorded. And you posted that? And you know, that's the problem with the internet. The thing is, with all these people coming at the barber being mad, Younger Man herself reposted what he posted supporting it. And I'm telling you, that's something people got to stop doing. Y'all got to stop being mad for other people. A lot of the times when people in general mad for somebody else, the person they mad for don't even be mad. And that's basically what she said after the barber started getting all this backlash. He posted speaking his mind and defending himself and she came back defending him. He saying, y'all got so much to say as if I'm trying to embarrass my dog. She reposted my whole video. If she didn't want me to record, she would have told me. Y'all don't know our bond nor our friendship. 
what y'all need to do is just send y'all prayers for her. And that's that. She didn't have a haircut in a month, and she wanted me to bring her haircut back to life, which I did. Thank you, sis, for coming and rocking with me. Like always, love you. She reposted saying, we bless. Don't let that get to you. So really think about it. That barber started getting hate online for no reason. He didn't do nothing wrong. And after basically the whole internet was worried about her, she came to XXL giving a statement once again. As many of my supporters know, I've been dealing with various personal health issues over the last few years. I was recently hospitalized and was successfully treated for several conditions. I'm doing better now. Well, it takes some time, but I'm on the road to recovery and look forward to the future. Rest assured, I'm in good spirits and everything will be explained in the music. That wasn't enough, though. The talk around her name was getting so heavy, she had to respond with her own video. Yeah, what up, Ma? I know I've been a little kid, you know what I mean? Long story short, basically, you know, um, just a small setback, you know what I mean, for just a comeback. Unfortunately, I made a lot of wrong decisions um, in my life. And, you know, things start to come, you know, catch up with you or whatever the case. So I just want you all to know, uh, besides all that, I'm actually doing much better. Um, I've been getting well, you know. Um, I've been very much sober. Uh, you know what I mean? But anyway, I don't want to go specifically into details because I really want to, you know what I mean, bring y'all along my journey. So, you know, besides, you know, dropping some new music, of course, I'm also have a documentary uh, with my story or whatever the case. So... I can keep y'all in tune, catch y'all back up, because I know y'all been wondering and all that. Y'all know I'm mysterious, you know. I keep my personal problems to myself. But now it's time to, you know, expand that and express that to y'all. So, so, um, basically to say, like, this is going to be one of M.A. Summers. This is going to be one of those M.A. Summers, I promise you. You know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? Stay in tune. I mean, bear with me too, man, because like, I know, like, I know it'd be me, it'd be me, my fault. I love y'all, you know, but things happen, unfortunately, but I got y'all back, man. I'm still here. I ain't going nowhere. And that's really where she been. And realistically, looking at it, she doing better than a lot of artists today. Every music video she dropped hit at least a meal. She get good engagement on social media. I'm glad to see that she turned her life around. It wasn't in no weird hating situations like the artist from our last video. DJ Cali. He got outsold by Tyler the Creator and got straight online hating on his career. And he ain't been the same since. And what really happened to him is on screen right now. Thanks, Scentberg, for the sponsorship. Check out the links below.